Lesson six, I will use the area model and number line to represent mixed numbers to the hundreds. So we're going to continue what we talked about in lesson five where we were learning about hundreds. And we're going to talk about what happens when you have more than one whole and you are trying to represent ones, tenths, and hundreds all on the same number. Like when we talked about mixed numbers and fractions, we talked about maybe two and seven tenths. Or we talked about two and sixty-three hundredths. These are mixed numbers, and we're going to talk about how you represent these as a decimal, how do you represent these in an area model, and how do you represent these in a number on a number line when they are in decimal form. Okay? Now you're going to notice in your math binder that you have a sheet that looks like this, you have a sheet that looks like this, and then you also have a sheet that has number lines on it. So I'm just going to tell you that I had intended to use all those. That's why they're all there, but I've kind of changed my mind. And I felt like I think we could do just as well if we just went right straight to the problem set today. So we're actually not going to use those three pages. If you want to recycle them at some point, you're more than welcome to. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our problem set. And you can see that it says, shade the area models to represent the number, drawing horizontal lines to make hundreds as needed, locate the corresponding point on the number line, label with a point, and record the mixed number as a decimal. So that's a quite a bit of of information that we have to do there. So let's start right here where it says shade the area models, okay? So first of all, I'm looking to have one whole and 15 hundredths. So when I look over here at my area models, I have three holes. So if I have one hole, that means I'm going to shade all of one of these to represent one hole. So we're going to shade one of these, shade it lightly so that you can still see what you have there. All right, now I have 15 hundredths. So if you can remember from what we did in lesson five, if you take all of these tenths, what do you do if you want to make these hundredths? You have to draw horizontal lines. That's why it says here, draw horizontal lines to make hundredths as needed. Well, we're going to need to do that this time because we have tenths and we want to make hundredths. So in order to take a 10 and make it into a 100, I have to divide this into 10 equal parts. So we're going to take our pencil, and we're going to divide this into 10 equal parts. Okay, so that's 5 above the halfway point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Now I'm going to do 5 below. So remember to make 5 parts, I'm only drawing 4 lines. So I'm actually only drawing 9 lines total. When I get finished, I'm going to go back and count because it's really easy to put too many or not enough. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So now I've got 10 groups of 10, which would be 100. So now I'm going to shade 15 hundredths. So a fast way to shade 15 hundredths is, well, since I know 15 is 1, 10, I can just shade all the way down one row. That's 10. And then I can shade 5 of another. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now I have one hole and 15 hundredths shaded. Okay, next it says, locate the corresponding point on the number line. Label with a point and record the mixed number as a decimal. Okay, so let's come down here to this number line. And this number line has already been labeled from 0 to 3. Well, we shaded one hole. So I know that if I go from here to here, I'm at one hole. So it's definitely going to be past this one mark. Now, when you look at your number line, it's divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 parts. Okay, so if I was going to make these hundreds into tenths, I would divide each of these into ten parts, each of these tenths. But this is too small to be able to do that. It would just look like a whole blob of lines. So what we have to do is we have to estimate. Now, I do have one tenth, so I could go over here. This will be one and one tenth, just like this tenth here. So when I'm going over five hundredths, I have to estimate. Well, I know that if I drew 10 lines, that the 5 would be pretty close to the middle. So I'm going to put it right here in the middle. I'm going to erase these other two lines so we don't get confused. Okay, so let's take a look here. So from 0 to 1 is my hole. And then from 1 to this first mark is 1, one and 1 tenth, or 1 and 10 hundredths. And then halfway would be 5 more, so this is 1 and 15 hundredths. Okay, so let's go ahead and 
label this 1 and 15 hundredths, and then it says to record this as a decimal. So we'll come back up here and we'll have 1 and 15 hundredths. Okay, let's try another one. All right, so now we're going to do 2 and 47 hundredths. So first, we're going to shade. So I've got one, two, three holes here. But when I look at my mixed number, I have two holes. I'm going to shade two whole area models. So this represents one hole, and then this would be two. Now I've got to do 47 hundredths. So in order to do hundredths, I have to decompose these tenths to make them hundredths. So I'm going to have to draw 10 or divide this into 10 parts. So that means I'm going to draw nine lines. I always like to do the half point first. That helps me at least make it a little bit even. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and be drawing these lines on your area model as well. Okay, so let's go back and count, make sure we have 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so now I've got to do 47 hundredths. Okay, so let's think about this for a minute. I've got four tens and 40, so this would be 10, 20, 30, 40. So here's 40. And then we're going to do 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So now I've got 2 and 10, 20, 30, 40, 7. Now you'll notice on this number line, they didn't go all the way from 0 to 4 or 0 to 3. They just went right from 2 to 3. So back here, from 0 to 2 would be my two holes, right? I'd have from 0 to 1 would represent this hole, from 1 to 2 would represent this hole, and then from 2 to 3 I've got to represent this 47 hundredths. So first I'm going to go over to 40. So this would be 2 and 10 hundredths, 2 and 20 hundredths, 2 and 30 hundredths, 2 and 40 hundredths. And I have to estimate about where 7 would be. Well the halfway point would be where 5 hundredths would be, so it's going to be a little bit past the halfway mark. So I've got 2 and 47 hundredths. And as a decimal, that looks like 2 and 47 hundredths. Okay? All right. Now we're just going to estimate the points on the number lines. So this is probably the trickiest part of all of this. So if you want to do A with me, or if you feel like, hey, I think I can do that, go ahead and do it by yourself and then come back and check. But if you want to do A with me, I want you to at least try to do B by yourself. But let's go ahead and try A together if you don't feel comfortable doing it by yourself yet. So my whole number or my mixed number is 2 and 95 hundredths. So remember, from 0 to 2 represents these two holes. Now I'm going to plot 95 hundredths. So I'm going to go over 90. So this would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So this would be 2 and 90 hundredths. So if I want 95, it's going to be pretty close right here in the middle. So I'm going to label this. I'm going to label this above since that 3 is in the way. 2 and 95 hundredths. Okay, see if you can't label 7 and 52 hundredths by yourself. So pause the video and then come back and let's see how you do. All right, so hopefully you try to do this by yourself. So here's where you should have put the point. Here is 10 hundredths, 20, 30, 40, 50 hundredths, and if it's 52, it's not going to be to the halfway point. It's going to be closer to this side of the halfway point. So I've got 7 and 52 hundredths. Okay? All right, now we're going to write the equivalent fraction and decimal for each of the following numbers. So we have unit form here. I have 1, 1. That means 1 whole and 2 hundredths. So how would we write that as a fraction? Here's my one whole, and here is two hundredths. Now I have to write that as a decimal. One and two hundredths. Be 
be really careful because fourth graders get really confused and they want to put 1.2. But remember that wouldn't be two hundredths, that would be one and two tenths. You have to have the zero here to be one and two hundredths. All right, let's try one more together. So one seventeen hundredths. So that's going to be one one seventeen hundredths. So as a decimal, that would be one and seventeen hundredths. Why don't you try to do these last four by yourself and then we'll come back and check together. So go ahead and pause the video and then let's check these together. Okay, so hopefully you paused and you did these by yourself. I don't think this was too tough. I believe you could do this pretty easily. So you can see I have my two ones, eight hundredths, and here's two and eight hundredths as a decimal. Again, you can't forget your zero or you have two and eight tenths. So here's two ones, 27 hundredths, two ones, 27 hundredths as a decimal. All right, let's look at the last two. So we have four ones, 58 hundredths, four ones, 58 hundredths, seven ones, 70 hundredths, seven ones, 70 hundredths. Okay? All right, moving right along. So now we're going to draw lines from dot to dot to match the decimal form to both the unit form and the fraction form. All unit forms and fractions have at least one match and some have more than one match. I want you to try to do this by yourself. I'm going to show you what they're expecting for the first one, but then I want you to try to do the rest by yourself. So you can see here we have seven ones, thirteen hundredths. So as a decimal, that would look like this. Seven ones, thirteen hundredths as a decimal, or excuse me, as a fraction, looks like this. I want you to do the rest by yourself. Pause the video, and then I want you to come back when you're finished. Okay, so hopefully you tried to do this by yourself. I want you to pay special attention to a couple of these. So for seven ones and three hundredths, you should have matched these. And then for the seven tens and three ones, you can look at the blue. But I want you to look at the green. I want you to notice that seven ones and three tenths is the same as seven ones and thirty hundredths. Remember how we talked about this in lesson five, how thirty hundredths is equal to three tenths, just like three dimes is equal to thirty pennies. So that's why seven ones and three tenths is matched to seven and thirty hundredths and seven and three tenths. And that's why both of these are matched to seven and thirty hundredths because they are equivalent. Okay, so hopefully you have a better grasp of what to do with mixed numbers as a decimal. And we will continue to move on in lesson seven.